Yo, welcome to the Ant-Man channel. It is the 12th of May, 2015. On this Tuesday, I welcome you and I say God bless you. I got an article in front of me from ChristianPost.com. Uh, excuse me if I haven't been doing a lot of videos lately. I've been kind of sick and I just don't want to sound all like stuffed up and weird, you know what I mean? But like, I've had a couple articles piling up because I've had a couple things that I've wanted to, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, expound on or kind of like, you know what I mean? Um, kind of weigh in on, if you will. So... You know, when you're given the Spirit of God, you're given discernment, and you're able to talk about these things. And know that, you know, the people of the world, they esteem each other because of their nice cars, their jobs, their degrees and all that. But, um, you know, Jesus Christ, He gives us real wisdom, and uh, we, don't have to, we don't have to try to put up gimmicks for people to accept us, because people will always try to... Uh, step on us to make themselves look better when we talk about morality today because we live in the postmodern era where no one's supposed to judge whatever's okay for you is okay for you and whatever's okay for me is right for me but this type of ideology does not it's not uh consistent it's not good for the type of uh country that we live in because we live in a republican form of government where the constitution the pref the you know the the all the, the preface of all of that is that our rights are given from God and that there's morality. All laws are based on moral judgments and that we cannot believe that morality is relative and that truth is subjective. The truth of God's word is not up for debate. It is the absolute truth. It is the inerrant, infallible, sufficient, inspired word of God. And to, and to question it is to call God a liar. It's to, it's to show that you have no faith. A lot of people these days, they will put on a, a, a facade for people so that they don't look bad. But in reality, they have no... It's like what it says in the Bible. They praise me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Uh, rend your heart and not your garment. Don't try to perceive... Don't try to just uh, project that you're a godly person. You have to be godly on the inside. People don't necessarily see that. When you tie that church, people don't know if you're a giving person. That's something that only God sees. If you're giving for the sake of wanting to be seen, you have something wrong with your intentions. You need to have that fixed and you need to have that renewed by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will show you how to be pure in heart in all the things that you do. And that's the way that we honor God is that and we honor God in our thoughts, in our mind and in our actions in our words, so that, you know, we follow the commands that we should love the Lord our God with all our mind, heart, strength, soul, and body, and all the rest. You know, we should do that because it's what brings us into the abundant life. It's what is the divine nature is to believe. You know, Jesus Christ was always, you know, the happiest. He was happy and content in life, even though he was always in trouble with people because they don't like what he says, just like you and me, right? We get to share in that suffering that we're not going to compromise, we're going to be upright, even though people in our days don't believe that being upright and righteous is good. You should leave people alone. You should mind your own business. And all of this stuff is not true. We're prophets. We're priests. We should be uh, the ones weighing in. The Christian should be the one that's in the dark, the one that's trying to shed a light on there, the one that's trying to weigh in on these controversial issues that are making a lot of people confused nowadays. We should be the ones running into this. We shouldn't be so uh domesticated and feminized especially you guys out there that are men we should have straight talk masculine type of messages to people not these watered down progressive liberal uh, dumbed down uh you know what i mean anti-theology types of ways of reaching out to people by trying to get them emotionally high but leaving them with nothing go leaving them hungry and thirsty uh we need to give them the truth of god's word this is what really brings sanctification is the truth of God's word. It makes us right. It get, it wakes up our spirit. It it makes our conscience bears witness to the law that the Holy Spirit convicts us of. So we must work together. And know that God is not there to hurt you or to be a cosmic killjoy. He wants to protect you from sin. He, he, can, he can perceive and see clearly what sin is. We don't because we're very much uh, marred by it a lot, by the byproduct of it all. But he could see it for what it is, and he just wants to make sure that you have good relationships with your people, with your neighbors, with your community, that you're, that you're glorifying and honoring your God by wanting to be a civilized, decent, intelligent, loving, creative, and powerful human being made in the image of God, bearing the Imago Dei. That is who you are. 
You are made in the image of God and that you have tremendous potential. When you have politicians or church pastors talking down to you like you're stupid and you can't understand the scriptures, you need to run away from those type of people. They don't see you for who you are. When the angel of the Lord came to Gideon, he didn't say, oh, what's up, weak dude? He said, what's up, mighty man of God? You know what I mean? Uh, was he acting like a mighty man of God at the time? No. But God can see you for who you're going to be and who he made you to be. So we should have eyes of faith to talk to people that way too. We shouldn't try to exalt ourselves by, by, by putting ourselves over others, by talking down to them. And if you know church pastors that are like that, get away from them because they're not loving. They're, they treat the church like it's a business. They have turned the house of God, the house of prayer, into a marketplace. They're not into uh, to, to ministering unto you from a heart of, of, of being there to feed the sheep and, and to provide for you. Uh, he's just there to do his job. And you know what I mean? Um, he's going to use psychology to try to boost your self-esteem and get you emotionally high, entertain you. But he's far from the word of God. If he's really just talking down to you and not using big theological words that we should not be intimidated by, but we should embrace the study of the word of God into even if you, we're not in it to be eggheads. We're in it for that so that we can understand what we know better and be able to evangelize. Because it seems like, you know, a lot of people don't evangelize today because they don't know how to defend their faith in the public. We have lost the authority of scripture in the culture. So we're very much timid because a lot of people don't read their Bible. They don't pray. And it's evident because they're not evangelizing. They're not standing for their, their what they should be convicted of if they say that they're be believers and followers of Jesus Christ. And I'm not being divisive. Well, the truth is divisive and it's exclusive, but I don't do it to divide. I do it out of love for the exhortation or of the truth of God's word. We need that. So thank you for joining me. This is that man challenge with all I'm about. I don't do anything. I don't do this for the sake of entertainment, but to lead people to a knowledge of the truth that we could see things from a Christian worldview all of the things that go on today. So let's get into this article already. Christians who have avoided the culture wars may no longer have a choice with religious freedom in jeopardy. Legal Scholars says. This is by Knapp Nasworth. I saved this. This is from May 9th, 2015. Uh, so this has been here for a while. John Inazu, Associate Professor of Law and Political Science at Washington University School of Law in St. Louis, was delivering a presentation, Religious Liberty in the American Culture Wars, at the Ethics and Public Policy Center's Faith Angle Forum, Miami Beach, Florida, May 4, 2014. So this is Miami Beach. Christians who have so far avoided controversial culture war issues will likely be pulled into those battles as their religious freedom becomes threatened due to gay marriage, Dr. John and Nazi warned Monday, theologically conservative Christian nonprofit organizations, including churches, could face losing their tax exempt status or being shut down. And Christian doctors, lawyers, and counselors, other professionals, could be forced out of the, their professions, he explained. Um, Inazu, professor, he's an associate professor of law and political science at Washington University School of Law in St. Louis, in, in Louis, like I just mentioned, was delivering a presentation, Religious Liberty in the American Cultural Wars, uh, Culture Wars, at the Ethics and Public Policy Center's Faith Angle Forum. Even though his, his personal beliefs often align with conservative Christianity, Inazu explained that he often thought of himself as a civilian in the culture wars, and he thinks a lot of other Christians... Uh, feel the same way. He, he feels like a lot of other Christians feel that way too. These Christians serve their communities and work through ministries that do a lot of good for society in education, social services, hospitals, mercy ministries, and many other areas. To illustrate, he spoke about focus on the family and inner varsity Christian fellowship. Focus, he pointed out, used to be considered part of the Christian right while it was led by James Dobson was that is uh, but that is no longer the case under its new leader, Jim Daly. Recently, for instance, it partnered with the Gill Foundation, a gay rights group, to help pass an anti-human trafficking bill in Colorado. As a member of its board, Inazu is even more familiar with the work of InterVarsity. Since its founding in 1946, Inazu explained, InterVarsity has sent tens of thousands of students all over the world to help build infrastructure and serve the poor, sick, and dying. The student group has never really been fighting the culture wars, he noted, and is one of the most racially and ethically diverse groups around. But InterVarsity has recently found itself on the culture war front lines as some colleges and universities have forced it off campus. 
Last year, for, ex for instance, all the state universities in California required the group to allow non-Christians to be leaders to remain a campus group. Amazing. If the Supreme Court rules in June that the U.S. Constitution requires all, st all 50 states to recognize same-sex marriage, and as he believes that the resulting religious freedom issues will depend much on how the opinion is written, he pointed to an amicus brief in the, in the case submitted by Douglas Laycock, a religious freedom expert and law professor at the University of Virginia Law School. Laycock argued in favor of same-sex marriage, but warned the, the, the court about the religious freedom issues that would inevitably follow. He wrote, Excuse me. For instance, must pastors, priests, and rabbis provide religious marriage counseling to same-sex couples? Must religious colleges provide marriage uh, students housing to same-sex same-sex couples? Must churches and synagogues employ spouses in same-sex marriages, even though much employees and be uh, uh, would be persistently and publicly flouting the religious teachings they would be hired to promote? Must religious organizations provide spousal fringe benefits to the same-sex spouses of any such employees they do hire? Must religious social service agencies place children for adoption with same-sex couples? Already Catholic Charities in Illinois, Massachusetts, and the District of Columbia has closed its adoption units because of this issue? Definitely not a laughing matter. Religious colleges, summer camps, daycare centers, retreat houses, counseling centers, meeting halls, and adoption agencies may be sued under public accommodations laws uh, for refusing to offer their facilities or services to same-sex couples, or they may be penalized by loss of licensing, accreditation, government contracts, access to public facilities, or tax exemption. For brevity, all footnotes have been removed. <laughs> During the court's recent oral arguments on gay marriage, and as we recalled, President Barack Obama's Solicitor General acknowledgement uh, or uh, acknowledged that some of these challenges are going to be an issue. If the court favors gay marriage, how much of an issue it will be depends on what Anazu calls the Bob Jones question. If Bob Jones University versus United States are in that case in 1983, the Supreme Court ruled that the Internal Revenue Service was correct to revoke the Christian school tax exempt status over its interracial or yeah interracial dating prohibition. The analogy is important because gay marriage supporters often claim that opposition to gay marriage is bigotry mo motivated by hatred. Okay, because they can read minds and hearts, because they can like. I don't know, man. This is a sick culture, dude. Because like some people buy into this stuff, you know what I mean? They, they, everybody's a armchair psychologist. Everybody uses this like, you know, like this um, reverse psychology on people to try to. I mean, it's really a sick culture because what that points to is that a lot of people are narcissistic. They think a lot of themselves, and they're they're critics of everyone else, but they're very easy on themselves. They don't lead by example, but they want to make. They're totalitarian-like. They want to make everybody do whatever they think. Just like the environmentalists. They want everyone to go back to the Stone Age, except for them. They could still have air air conditioning, heater, but they, they, they call you all, you know, you're all bad for the earth. So it's really like a totalitarian spirit behind all of that. That's not, that's not a way to be a leader by telling people what to do when you're not disciplined enough to do it yourself. So um, let's see here. Do 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 do. Now, it is a good time to be thinking about the implications of the Bob Jones question, whether we really think Gordon College in 2015 is like Bob Jones in 1983, that inner varsity is like a neo-Nazi group, and that Tim Keller is like the Grand Wizard of the Klan. If we think there are meaningful differences, then now is a good time to think harder about the rhetoric fueling some of these debates, and as we said, and as who has a book that will be published later this year, Confident Pluralism Surviving and Thriving Through Deep Difference, Audio of His Faith Angle Forum presentation is available on the Ethics and Public Policy web, uh, Center website. A transcript will be posted later. Thank you for joining me. I think that this is a good thing to point out to some of us guys that call ourselves Christians. There is no sitting on the fence. There is no, I'm not into this kind of, we're not libertarian. We're just defending our faith being obedient to the command in uh, Peter, in the book of Peter, that tells us to have, a, have an answer for the hope that is in us. We're supposed to have a, a spirit of vigilance and uh, being, uh, you know what I mean, just like 
soldier like not militant like libertarian style but we're supposed to be very you know driven by the truth man to want to for the sake of people right not because we're eggheads and want to beat people over the head with it but know that this religious liberty is some liberty is something that has to be defended it's not something that is free freedom ain't free